Oh my gosh. There's only one yingling left. Little warm up. Okay, so welcome to the world's worst fishing today. I'm Chris Jones, and uh, this video I'm I'm really excited about. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions, um, pretty much kind of since the channel started, um, about you know sort of like budget molds, for example. Um, not everyone's going to start out with, of course, you know a hundred and fifty dollar four cavity CNC worm mold, right? Or or a expensive swim bait mold. Not everybody's going to start with that, and the market does have cheaper, um, more beginner options. And those options, well, the two um, most common options, I guess, are these right here. You have casted aluminum, oh, oh, glare, casted aluminum, and then you have what's known as stone mold. Okay, and um, we'll start with the stone mold first. Okay. Um, the most, I think, popular um, website for these is literally called Bait Molds. Um, I'm pretty sure. Let, let me make sure. Yeah, baitmold.com, right? It's pretty simple. And, you know, one thing real fast is, you know, the stone molds, they're not necessarily stone. Um, let's see, this one, yeah, you can see it there, is Corian, right? Which is actually um, a very popular material that, like, countertops are made out of. So if you walk into somebody's house and it looks like they have stone countertops, there's a good chance that it's this stuff right here. It's, it's basically like an acrylic, you know, just some facts here. It's basically an acrylic mixed with minerals and, and a few other things. Um, and I, I have to say, the, the milling on this is actually quite nice. Um, you know, however, there are a few limitations as far as, you know, getting a dull finish, uh, the mold needs to be oiled um, pretty regularly or else it can kind of stick together a little bit. Um, I guess sort of like the uh, clear molds that we shot a long time ago, uh, those would stick together and that was sort of a uh, Lexan type bulletproof glass. Just doing a little research on this material, um, it can only withstand like 212 degrees Fahrenheit before getting damaged. Um, I can't see how that could really work or, or else you would never even get one good use out of this. The mold actually does feel really nice in my hand. Uh, the other entry level, entry priced molds um, are the casted aluminum. Mainly, you're gonna see these from the Do It Corporation. Um, you know, they've really made a name for themselves um, for beginner entry level price products. Um, I know that like their jig and wire bait molds are pretty popular so for example if I was going to get into pouring lead um, you know I, I would use a lot of do it products um, so this is an injection mold it's a little three inch ripper swim bait right there and what's funny about this is that this injection mold was injection molded right so this molten aluminum was actually injected into a steel mold okay um, so that's, I just, I've always kind of thought that was funny. You're using an injection mold that was injection molded. Um, nothing wrong there. You know, this is aluminum. So let's say I want to do something that requires heat. I can preheat this mold and I can heat it on the griddle um, after the bait has been poured. You know, obviously being that it's sort of like a rough casted aluminum, the finish on the bait is poor. One thing I will say about both of these molds that I do not like these are both injection molds. There's absolutely no pins and screws and wing nuts. There's no apparatus that came with these molds that tells the user this mold needs to be shut tightly. If you get a CNC aluminum mold, right, you're gonna see, you're gonna see this right here, okay? A lot of molds come with wing nuts. But that right there tells me, let's say I'm really new to lure making, I don't wanna make you know, a mistake that's gonna cause burns you know, I can pretty much tell right away, okay, this mold needs to be shut and shut well. So we're gonna see if these little hand clamps will do the job. Um, boy, they're not quite, that's not quite thick enough. It won't really, uh, I'm not sure that that is sufficient. 
I mean, yeah, it's it's got it clamped pretty well, and then maybe we'll do one there. So that that might work. Oh yeah, that right there is going to be clamped well. Okay, so being that both these molds are of the swim bait nature, this one's kind of like a little shad, and and the uh, do it over here kind of off screen is uh is just a more traditional swim bait. So we're just going to use swim bait plastic, and uh, of course on this channel, Dead On Plastics um, provides every type of plastic that a bait maker could need, and uh, this right here is just kind of their medium blend, which is called the swim bait blend, and uh, this is the sinking formula. So being that these are both kind of swim baitish. We're gonna make a very simple swim bait color. Just white mica powder. That's it. Just add a little bit of that. Not too much. They'll still have a little bit of uh, transparency, see-through effect. We're just gonna show you what you get when you buy these molds. And I'll look up the pricing on these. Neither one of these was more than $40. Um, but I'll look up the pricing and like put the pricing on the screen or something. All right, this plastic is 324 degrees. That's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to inject both of these at a low temperature. We'll just kind of set the camera up right here. I wanted to inject both these molds at a low temperature because that's usually your most friendly temperature. If you think about it, colder plastic doesn't have to cool down as much, right? So plastic that's 320 degrees doesn't have to cool down as much as if this were 380 or 360, right? That's less contracting. So you have less chance of denting and other problems like that and less chance of flashing. The hotter the plastic is, the thinner it is, the higher your risk of flashing is. All right, I have never done this stone mold. Okay. Felt pretty good. Drawing in quite a bit. Go ahead and hit this back port on the do-it mold, on the ripper mold, okay. Again, even if I was using a regular CNC mold, fully clamped, you still don't wanna just ram your injector and force it. Just enough pressure that the mold fills and you feel it stop. Okay, here's the test that really matters. How does each one drum roll? Ah, both did really good. A a about the same. I, I really can't fault either one. Uh, you know what? Let's do the uh, do it mold first. Yeah. Oop. Boy, I'm still not used to the whole hinge thing, so to speak. That's like so different than. <laughs> Come on, than than what I'm used to doing. Okay. So, let's uh, oop, check out our results there. Looking good. You can see a big fat dent in that one right there. So you can just kind of see, look at the bottom side of that head. It's just not filled out. Eh. Yeah, you can see that dent there. That's a good angle of it right there. But that's okay. It's not really gonna ruin your bait by any means. You know, the, the thing to really watch out for is if your tails don't fill, that's really what's gonna affect your action not a dent in the nose. But, you know, if you're nitpicking a mold's performance, you know, obviously dents, oops, sorry. Obviously dents play a role in that. Yeah, there's a dent right, oh, dent right there in that one. You can kind of see a dent there. But you know, everything filled out well. There's no air pockets. Uh, you know, the sprues, or excuse me, the runners are adequate. Um, and what I mean by that is there's enough plastic here to really let those baits draw in to where there's not pockets up in the noses. You can kind of see the finish there. You can really see it there. Let's, let's zoom in a little bit. Yeah. You can kind of see there's a little gritty finish there. You just look at the tail. Later on when we look at a CNC mold, you'll really kind of see the difference in overall finish. But I have to say, all five baits came out just fine. Yeah, a little bit of dents, but nothing wrong with that. All right, let's look at our countertop. See what happened here. Oh yeah, it definitely wants to uh, stick a little bit if you don't oil it. Come on, 
Let's get the uh, <clears throat> get get the knife here. It should kind of let us pry it a little bit. Maybe that's what this notch is for. I don't know. <laughs> Come on. All right. Just gonna have to use our insufficient finger strength here. Wow. Yeah, this is not good. Trying to pry it open from every every angle here. All right. Jeez, Louise. All right, we're we're still working on it. <laughs> Come on. Jeez. Man. Oh, okay. Completely destroyed the baits. Yeah, wow. All right. So, these stone molds are going to need a nice oiling, lubricating before each run, which, surprise, surprise, I kind of already knew that from listening to a few people um, talk about their experience, but I wanted to show you guys what happens when you buy these molds. You know, that's not to, uh, to, to discredit how this mold could perform. We just want to see what happens when you take it out of the box and, uh, and use it. So this is going to be a mess. I actually really like this little, this little bait. Just a little kind of reminds me of a banjo minnow sort of. Okay, what a mess. Worm oil, here we come. We are going to oil the devil out of these things. Because that is our only hope. Oh my gosh, what a mess. All right. Make sure everything is covered, including the runner. Just even that was a mess. All right. We might stand a chance now. Not looking so good for old Stony Baloney here. Okay, round two with Mr. Countertop here. Let's see if this does any better. Yeah, interesting here about uh, Corian. Oops, well, now we're on the DuPont website. But Corian Solid Surface. And this, I'm assuming that means this exact material. Heat resistance up to 212 degrees. Um, undamaged up to 212 degrees. So, you know, the bait mold website says this stuff can withstand extreme high temperatures, thousands and thousands of runs without being uh, damaged. Um, you know, that would be an interesting, um, uh, I, I guess, observation is how long one of these lasts. And you know, another thing is a material like this does not expel heat as fast as aluminum. That's why bait molds use aluminum. A, because it has the tolerances to be milled precisely. It mills easily, but it also lets heat out fast, okay? So that your baits cool down quickly. If you were using other materials, you would have to wait longer for your baits to cool down. And nobody wants to do that. Okay, a little, little bit better, a little bit better, a uh, little bit better time here. Yeah. Okay, you can barely even see the bait there. They're like almost the same exact color, and this one's a little bit see-through. So the tails are an absolute mess. They did not fill in at all, as you can see. Part of that is the fact that I oiled it. Oil will actually build up in, in, in those little crevices there. And then the plastic can't compress the oil, of course, and if the oil can't force out, then you're left with areas where the plastic could not fill in. So that is not necessarily because the mold will not fill. That's a byproduct of the fact that I have to fill this thing up with oil in order to have a chance at getting a bait that's gonna come out. All right, for the next round, we're just gonna go straight black. And we're keeping the colors really simple today because today is more about the molds and black allows you to really see the finish and uh, all the little details on a bait, which I guess I should have done that from the start. I just didn't think about it until after I uh, took them out of the molds the first time. But just solid black works nice. All right, let's take a look at these rippers here. 
These ought to look pretty good. Yeah. And right away in person, the black shows us the finish of the bait. Actually, we'll get these out. I went ahead and filled in those uh, final, final ones right there. So let's take a look at these real nice and close. Take a real good look at the finish. You can see it kind of looks like it's gritty, right? Like it, it, it almost looks like a bait full of salt. Just kind of sort of the rough, gritty finish. I'm trying to keep this in focus. You can see dent there. And these were, um, these were injected around 300, <coughs> excuse me, golly, 330 degrees. Okay, so these definitely came out better. And like I said, you can see how, see how you already can just kind of see the scaling pattern. Um, something about black, you just really see every detail, um, which includes that giant dent right in there. It's like a little valley. Um, you know, some of that, you know, I, this, I actually oiled this round lighter to, to try not to trap like little oil bubbles. Um, you can see the tails still did pretty horribly i mean that is terrible and that is with very light oil i made sure you know just kind of looking in those crevices that there was no kind of oil bubbling up inside that would kind of stop the flow of plastic uh, so i'm having a hard time with these tails and uh you know i kind of fancy myself a pretty experienced bait maker now and, and still haven't really gotten one of these to come out right we have Two CNC molds from two different manufacturers, two of the uh, top manufacturers, just to kind of um, show you that um, it's not necessarily specific to one brand of mold. Um, CNC in general is just the, the better option. Um, so here we go. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll do a couple of these uh, swim baits first. These are obviously single top port injection. All right, looking good. We'll maybe do the worm mold next because it's going to use more plastic. And then if we have some left over, we'll try to get one more of the swim baits. So if you just look, the overall color is just more vibrant on the baits that came out of the CNC. You know, the the if you just look at the two different colors here this one's just duller the color isn't as vibrant um that's just the the main difference um you're gonna get less dents less problems with with real cnc milled molds i think the reason being is because the tolerances are so much better that it allows for proper and better venting um the the do it mold actually vented quite well the stone mold uh, did not do anything well um but there's basically your main difference right there. That, that image right there, casted aluminum versus CNC, both baits are ultimately going to function the same way. Um, but, you know, a lot of people want to know what, uh, basically what they're getting when, when they buy sort of entry-level priced molds. And, you know, basically what we saw tonight is the answer to that question, I guess. Okay, so being a watch guy, these molds, comparing the quality of the molds, kind of made me think of a watch analogy, right? So the, the Do It mold over here on the left, the entry level Swiss made watch versus the luxury Swiss made watch, right? So both watches ultimately do the same thing. They tell the time, both have a similar date function, both are fashioned from stainless steel. Both have stainless steel uh, bracelets. You know, they both have polished and brushed aspects of the bracelets. However, if we look at the two, the fit and finish just doesn't quite add up. And just a kind of close up shot of each. Because, hey, who doesn't love blue dial watches? Yeah, that bezel there is really special. It's ceramic with liquid metal inlay for the uh, markings and uh, numerals there. You know, just a difference in quality when, when you get them in person, much like the molds tonight. So, you know, a lot of these things are hard to show on camera, um, but 
when in use, the uh, differences are uh, definitely noticeable. Okay, so far we have demonstrated and um, run a few rounds of the uh, cast aluminum mold from Do It, the little uh, three inch ripper, the uh, Corian uh, artificial stone mold uh, from Bait Mold. And then we've kind of compared that with uh, two different CNC molds, just to kind of look at all three options. How did they perform? You know, d did they require, um, you know, extra prep and steps uh, to get good results? Which ones dent more? How's the fit and finish? Uh, which ones are shinier? It, it, you know, there, there's just so many criteria to, to think about. Um, but, you know, obviously the stone mold um, did not do well for me. Doesn't do well for a lot of people. Um, but I wanted to show it on my channel. Um, I'm, I kind of got curious, though, about that stone. Let's see how it really holds up to temperature. We're going we're gonna to get some plastic in there that is scalding hot and just see if this material is really even a viable material for bait making. Okay, 498 degrees. That's about as hot as you can go without your plastic turning into a muffin. And it looks like we may have actually burned it. Yep, it burned. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, we burnt the plastic, which is never good. This is when your plastic actually becomes um, toxic. So that right there is what truly burnt plastic looks like. See how it's no longer black? So I got to get this out of here. You can see my fans are blowing the fumes away from me, but you still want to distance yourself. So anyway, that is absolutely as hot as your plastic can get. Okay, so for anyone that's never seen a muffin top in soft plastic lure making, that is what burnt plastic looks like. It kind of domes and quite literally looks like you baked a muffin that rose up in the cup. It is nasty, nasty stuff. And it, it just turns your plastic into a horrible color. However, I stand corrected. Well, not necessarily corrected. I never said that the mold wouldn't uh, definitively hold up the temperatures. But after reading about this actual material uh, from the company website, it, it just, it sounded like it just was not a viable material as far as temperature. But this thing is unscathed. Mr. Cat, did you get trapped by the dogs up in here? Hmm? Huh? Did you get trapped by the doggies? Yeah, how are you gonna get out of this one? Okay, and one final test here is the heat griddle. Obviously, we know that aluminum can be heated and baked and torched uh, a number of different methods to either preheat or post-heat. Uh, a lot of times, I like to heat my molds prior to injection or especially in hand pouring, I like to heat them after I've poured the bait, really blends color together and bonds layers together to make a nice, strong bait. Um, but, you know, the test here is the stone mold. Um, Preheating and heating molds in general is very, very common in soft plastic lure making, and uh, you just want to know if the material that you've chosen will do that. You know, if can basically can the stone take the heat from the griddle, and does it distribute the heat through the stone well enough? Does the material distribute heat that it will actually melt this plastic back in? So I've poured a little bit of plastic in, similar to if I had just hand poured a bait. And now we're going to see if the molds will make that plastic molten again, much like you would want it to do. Okay, so the molds have been heating for a while, and both molds uh, actually did reach temperature to where you could boil water on the surface, and they re-liquefied um, the plastic to an extent. The stone mold actually reached remelt temperature faster than the do-it mold, um, and I think that's because the surface of the stone mold is, was actually more flat. You know, the outside of the do-it mold is actually a pretty rough, uneven surface, and so the entire surface of this mold actually is not in direct contact with the heat. Um, however, the stone molds did not hold up all that well. There was a lot of warping. So, look at that edge now. See how it's just bent? And basically the whole mold is now soft and bendable. <laughs> so yeah, you can see that there. We're literally just bending the mold. So it actually transferred heat really well. It didn't melt 
Um, it didn't burn. Um, however, it does warp and pretty much you do not want to use it on a heat source. Dun, 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 dun. Well, since the stone mold got warped, uh, I figured we'll just have a little fun and smack it with a hammer and see what happens. Nice. That's pretty, that's pretty fun right there. Nice. Yeah, very interesting. Still really hot though. Anyway, figured we'd do something silly here at the end. I didn't actually want to destroy the mold, um, but I, I did want to do the heat griddle test just to see, hey, you know, if somebody has better luck with these things than I do when they want to heat their molds, um, how does it turn out? And, you know, I do think if maybe not your first go around, but after several reheats on a heat source, I do think you will see that warping like I did. So obviously if I had to grade everything, right, CNC aluminum gets an A plus. Um, there's really, I mean, you, you have to really nitpick things. Um, you know, obviously nothing's perfect in this life. You do get baits with imperfections in, in, in CNC aluminum. You know, sometimes it's an issue of the temperature of not only the plastic, but also the temperature of the mold. Some molds you need to uh, hold pressure. Some molds you need to run them real fast. Um, there's still a lot of variables to getting good results with CNC aluminum. Um, the do it casted mold, uh, I mean, to, to me, that, that, that's a solid B. There's absolutely, I mean, I, I cannot really in, in good faith discourage somebody from, from buying one of those. You know, you're, you're probably gonna have more dents, you're probably gonna have things not uh, inject quite as well, and you're gonna have the dull finish. Now, you can beat the dull finish, you can actually modify uh, your do-it molds. You can coat them with like high temperature engine paint um, if you want to go to the trouble. Um, so yeah, solid B there. The stone mold, um, like a D minus, you know, I don't want to just completely give it an F, but it was very difficult to work with. There again, I chose sort of a complicated shape in, in the swim bait. I think if you get a real basic shape, you'll probably have some good success. Um, it just, it doesn't check very many of the boxes that I personally want in bait making. So kind of no surprise to me um, how the results came out. But um, I get a lot of questions about this subject and wanted to give everyone uh, my thoughts and demonstration on it. So hope everyone has a great day and a great weekend. And uh, shoot me lots of comments down below, of course. And we hope to catch you next time on the World's Worst Fishing.